Okay, so thus far in the previous videos we've been looking at hydrostatics, uh, which is simply fluids that are not moving, they're stationary. Okay, but now we're going to look at fluids that are moving. They're in motion, and we're going to introduce Bernoulli's equation. Okay, so where do we start? Well, if we consider um, fluid that is moving from one cross-sectional area to a smaller cross-sectional area, right? It, it flows through a tapered tube. Um, but what are the characteristics of this flow? Number one, it's laminar. Okay, make sure that you recall and understand what's laminar flow. Right, these are the assumptions we're making. And the fluid is non-viscous. Okay, so laminar flow and non-viscous flowing through a tapered tube. Okay, so if we consider um, the volume of liquid, volume of the fluid, that passes this point 1 over here, as you can see. As it passes point 1, there's a certain amount of volume that, that um, passes over here. Okay? And if we know, well, first of all, what is that volume? Volume is the cross-sectional area times the length, delta x. Right? So there is our volume of fluid that has passed point 1. And if we know what the density of that fluid is, then we've got the mass. Okay? So the mass of fluid that passed point 1 is density 1 times the cross-sectional area multiplied by the displacement. Okay. Now, if we look at point 2, okay, Remember, point 2 is in the tapered section, where the cross-sectional area is smaller than over here, at point 1. We do exactly the same thing. The mass that flows during this very short time period, past point 2, is similarly equal to rho 2, area 2, times the displacement. Okay? So, now, because, because, or if, the flow is laminar, okay, this is an important point. So, we've got some, uh, a volume of fluid that passes point 1, we've got a volume of fluid that passes point 2, as the fluid is flowing to the right. I don't even know if I mentioned that. The fluid is flowing to the right, okay? I, th I think that's obvious for everyone. Well, okay, anyway. If it's laminar, then no fluid during this time can, um, there's no chaotic flu uh, flow, so there's no um, accumulation of fluid at any point between points 1 and 2. Okay, so the, what this tells us is that the, the fluid that comes out here, the mass of the fluid over here that passes point 2, has to be the same as the the amount of fluid passing point 1. Okay? So the mass of the fluid emerging from point 2 during a time interval delta t must be the same as the mass entering at point 1. Alright? Laminar flow, non-viscous. The, that, that amount of mass passing point 2 coming out of point, at point 2 is the same as the amount that's coming in at point 1. Okay, so this is what we have. This is mass 1, and this is mass 2. I hope that makes sense. Laminar flow, non-viscous uh, fluid. Okay, but what is... Um, how do we relate this now to velocity, or speed? Okay, this delta x here... This displacement is equal to the velocity at 1 multiplied by delta t. And delta x2 is the velocity of the fluid, v2, times delta t. Okay? So if we take this expression and put it into there, 
and we take this expression and put it into there, then we get this. Rho, the density at this point of the fluid, multiplied by the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the velocity of the fluid, is equal to the density over here, the cross-sectional area over here, and the velocity over here. Okay, and this is called the continuity equation. Now, this is the last thing for this video. Um, if, 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 if the mass density is the same, is the same right throughout, if the density is the same right throughout, the mass density, then this, these guys will fall away. And we're going to have A1, V1 is A2, V2. Okay, so what is this telling us? So the, the velocity at 1 multiplied by the cross-sectional area is equal to the velocity at 2 multiplied by the cross-sectional area. So let's just think about this. This tells us that um, if, if it's tapering, re remember guys, laminar flow, non-viscous, and incompressible. I kind of didn't mention that. The only time that this density would be the same is if it's incompressible, okay? If the fluid is incompressible. So these are our assumptions. Laminar flow, non-viscous, incompressible. I hope you guys get that. Those three guys, okay? Um, so what was I saying? Oh, the velocity here, okay? The velocity at 2 is equal to the ratio of those areas multiplied by the velocity at 1, or the speed at 1. Okay? So, if the area, the cross-sectional area at 1, is larger than the cross-sectional area at 2, then can you see that V2 will be faster than V1? Because you're multiplying V1 by a number that's greater than 1. Okay? So, what does this tell us? A fluid flows faster in a narrow part of a tube than in a wide part.